you might look at it as an opportunity. Ooh, things are being shaken up. How long would it have taken me to get to the willingness to change that I have now on my own? So you can thank the disasters and the degeneration around you and the disorder. That's where new ideas come from. Today I'm reading Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Look at this mustache. This was a man who was not afraid to make bold style choices at a time when it wasn't exactly encouraged. So let's just dive into it. Human all too human. This is where I'm gonna get into the topic that I titled this video about. The idea that we should embrace degeneracy or delinquency. We should embrace the fact that not everything is perfect, that it has to be made up of human beings. And human beings are fallible, and human beings will always have an element of randomness or disorder to go along with the order that we're trying to achieve. It's all delineated by this invisible force called the normal, the, the meaning of the day. And if everyone behaved according to that, we'd be like ants. You could give us a mission and we could transport things from left to right. We could uh, create new, new ant colonies in different places, but we can never do what only human beings can do, which is create something original, you know, through will, through willpower and imagination, human beings are able to do more than is ordered of them. Imagine having a child and just ordering it to do things from, from birth to death. That wouldn't be a child, that'd be a robot or like a Roomba. You gotta let human beings be humans. And part of humanity is disorder. He calls it the degenerate class. Those who degenerate are of the highest importance wherever progress is to take place. Every great progress must be preceded by a partial weakening. The strongest natures hold fast to the type. The weaker ones help to develop it further. You can have more sympathy for not only the weakest elements of society, but the weakest parts of yourself. Because what Nietzsche is saying is that weakness, degeneration, is actually the birth process. Something becomes firm and tight, and then degeneracy happens, you lose your job, there's a pandemic, you know, people become overly emotional in your life and cause disarray. All of these things happening do not have to be seen as purely negative. They can be seen as sort of the tilling of the soil that must take place before you're able to grow something new. Immediately for Nietzsche, he is vindicating the human drives, which makes his philosophy incredibly life-affirming. A lot of philosophies you read, here's what you gotta change, here's what you gotta put in order. Nietzsche is saying, actually, things exist in this chaos for a reason. Rarely is degeneration a crippling, even a vice or any physical or moral damage unaccompanied by some gain on the other side. How many of you have experienced that? I think of the rock bottom moment. If you haven't experienced a rock bottom, I hate to say I hope you do, but I hope you experience what comes after the rock bottom. You know, I know a lot of other people who are, who are thinking about doing something new and they're almost waiting for things to implode. That's a tendency we have. We are very afraid of taking a step back or allowing things to crumble a little bit. You know, it's like we've built a sandcastle with our lives and we tremble thinking about stepping on part of it to flatten it for a new extension. He advocates for two things happening at once here. He says, first, the increase of stable power in your life through close spiritual ties, such as faith and communities. This is the yin and yang of Nietzsche. We need power. but that can be counterproductive if the person doing it has bad intentions. But power under the right intentions is everything. It's courage, it's heroism, it's traveling across the ocean, it's going to a new place, it's finding a new discovery. Power for him comes from communal feeling and faith. You might associate faith with religion, but I think he means it in a broader sense of faith at what's possible. Communal feeling is the source of power. Try to imagine anything you've ever done, whether it be a new goal or a new job or just a leap in terms of your own progress that wasn't originally inspired by someone in your community, either your 
direct community or somebody you're watching online like this. Once you've developed power and higher goals, the appearance of degenerate types and a partial weakening or wounding of that stable power becomes necessary. So what a strange idea. We develop power and we're not ashamed of it. We appreciate power, power. Then we let it weaken and wound so that it can change into something else. <laughs> Nietzsche created the sentence, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So that gives you a really good idea of his philosophy. Negative things, things that seem to wound us, actually heal, just like a wound, stronger. If you've ever broken a bone, you know that's true. The bone heals stronger. The calcification around the wounded area overcompensates for what was lost. And the same thing happens in our lives. So he challenged us to not only not run away from what we're scared of or what could wound us, but to run right towards it. Because as long as it doesn't kill you, it's gonna make you stronger. If someone is falling, push them. That, that's how much this guy embraced the rock bottom and the idea that our struggle is something that's gonna teach us something. Sometimes falling further and faster is a quicker way to hit the bottom and bounce back up. And for him, that's the metaphor, that we are not static growth, we are bouncing growth. I mean, could you imagine reading any story that didn't have a whole bunch of negative, awful things to overcome? Kurt Vonnegut said, a story is as simple as taking somebody incredibly likable and having every awful thing you can imagine happen to them. It's a good, the, it's a good story. Imagine a story about comfort. It's like, Devin got a pretty good job at a college and had more than enough to save for a larger television. And then he met a woman who was pretty cool and they had two kids together and nothing ever went wrong. Anyway, book over. I would hate that book. If you're not growing, you're dying. Reticular activation system or the outside world will program you. I agree. It's amazing to see how small changes in our lives, small epiphanies can actually lead to massive, massive transformations. And you'll notice it in the way you talk. You get a good idea, a life affirming idea, like I can overcome this. You'll see, sometimes people just switch. Change happens fast and it happens slow. But once it really happens, it happens all at once. The mental changes happen in an instant. Yes, Jackson, yes. I, if I could just get one message out there, it's that you don't have the road ahead of you, you think. You have a switch and then a completely new road on which the streets are paved with a slightly more glimmering substance. Human beings are accustomed to suffering, but we need a meaning to suffer for. But why not lean into the will to suffer for your own aim? The dance of human life is the most glorious, perhaps, transcendent thing that we can do. If you're dancing, as Nietzsche said, you are practicing philosophy. As he said, you can climb the mountain. For Nietzsche, it was just climbing a mountain, feeling the cold air, introducing yourself to other people. Along the way, you build a philosophy and you build a religion. His counterpart to the idea of Jesus or the idea of saviors was a character called Zarathustra, the Zarathustra, a free-thinking man who climbed the mountain every day, met disciples, met people along the way who represented different ways of thinking, different ways of living, and yes, debated them, invited them over for dinner, and there was no answer at the end. Sometimes Zarathustra's answers changed depending on who he was talking to or they morphed or they grew. And the whole story is not as a savior coming down and giving us the answer, but a savior coming down and meeting us where we are, inviting us all to the table, and basically dancing up a mountain with us. So it's a little weird, but that is nonetheless among the most popular books of ideas ever published. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please tune in next time. I'll be doing more of these, animating them, and just making them as distilled and entertaining as possible so that they can exist in your head alongside 
some of the shocking and unsettling images that we are exposed to in the media. Enjoy your day.